Howdy, everybody. Last week, we got all the way to the point of our stacking base, which I've renamed our additive loft to. And I'm calling it stacking base because this is our the base of our container and it's designed to be stacked inside of a base plate here. So what we're going to do this week is go over holes. And that will be the easiest way to model the hole here, the six and a half millimeter diameter that's designed to be used with magnets that are six millimeters in diameter and two millimeters thick. And Gridfinity is also designed to be able to use with certain screws. And that's what this three millimeter diameter here is. So let's get started. I am going to create a sketch. The XY plane. And I'm going to use Actually, I want to look at this from the bottom. And I'm going to use the section view tool. And we're going to create external geometry for the edges of the square here. And the keyboard shortcut for that is GX. Or you can click this icon right here. So I want external geometry for this edge in particular, but I'm going to go ahead and create one for that fillet. And now I'm going to draw a circle. The keyboard shortcut is GC. But I want four circles for these magnets. And I want these circles to be symmetrical about these two in particular to be symmetrical about the y-axis, these to be symmetrical about the x-axis. So I'm going to press the S key to create a symmetry constraint. I'm going to select the centers of the two circles and then the axis of symmetry. Do the same thing for this circle. And once again, for this circle. I want all these circles to have an equal diameter, so we're going to use the equals constraint. And now we're ready to set the diameter. And the keyboard, you can use your smart dimensioning tool, like I just did when I press the D key, or you can press KO as a shortcut to set the diameter. And we want this to be six and a half millimeters. Before I do that, I'm going to go back to my global variables. I want to add something called the magnet diameter. That's going to be 6.5. Now I can go back to my sketch. And press KO once again. Our equals sign. And we're going to access our global variables. We're going to access the magnet diameter object. So now each one of these circles is six and a half millimeters and we're almost there because we need to place this circle. And I know I created this external geometry for the outer edge, but it actually might be more useful to create external geometry for this edge here. So I press GC instead of GX. It might be faster just to select the tool here. Yeah. So I want this edge, this edge, and this edge. And what that's going to do is allow us to select 
to input this 4.8 millimeter placement. So I'm going to use my smart dimensioning tool. Select that point in this edge. And I can say 4.5 right there. And that point in that edge, I'll say 4.5 once again. And now our circle is placed. But we might want to use this dimension later on when we create our screw holes. So I'm going to name this. I'm going to name it placement X. Actually, that would be placement Y. I'm going to name this one placement X. And our sketch here is fully constrained. I'm going to close it. And I'm going to use the hole tool to create holes in our profile. I'm going to say none. And we have our diameter of six and a half millimeters. And as I said before, our depth is going to be 2.1 millimeters because our magnets are two millimeters thick. So 2.1, we've got to add the millimeter unit. And there we have it. So I'm going to use this tool to flip around and we can see our magnet holes there. I'm going to name this magnet holes. Um, the hole wasn't exactly showing up properly. And I just realized it's because we need to check the reversed button on our hole. And now you can see the 2.1 millimeter depth there. And you can see that edge of the cylinder there. So click OK. We're good to go there. All that's left now is our screw holes. So I'm going to create one more sketch. I'm going to select the XY plane again. And I'm going to press the 5 key to flip around to the bottom. And now we can create our circles once again. One circle, two circle, three circle, and a fourth one. We're going to create symmetry once again of these positions. Okay, we're going to make all of our circles equal, all of our diameters, that is. Now I'm going to constrain the diameter, and this time I want it to be our screw diameter. So I'm going to go back to our variables again. I'm going to add another property, and it's going to be screw diameter. And right there, three millimeters. Now, going back to the sketch, I'm going to view the bottom once again. I'm going to go back to constraining the diameter. And we're going to access our global variables and access the screw diameter object. And it appears that I didn't quite set the equal constraint to all the circles. Now they're all constrained. And I need to create external geometry again for those edges. Right there. Now, if you remember, previously I said we might want to use that constraint again. And we do. So now I'm going to access 
the sketch that I didn't rename, which is going to end up being sketch 005. And I want to access our constraints. And because I named that constraint, it shows up as placement Y or placement X. And it looks like I misspelled placement, but oh well. So there's placement Y. Had I not renamed this constraint, all the constraints are available in an array. In an array starting at the zero index, those of you familiar with programming understand that. So there's the zero index, the one index, the two index, and so on. That would be really cumbersome to go through and try to find the exact index of the constraint that you made in the previous sketch, which is why I named it to be used in this expression editor. So I'm going to go back and use placement Y in this sketch. You're right there, placed perfectly. And there's symmetry about all the points, so they're also placed perfectly. And I'm going to create this other constraint here. Same thing. I'm going to access sketch 5, because I forgot to rename it. But when I do rename it, because I'm using the label attribute to reference, it'll show up as the sketch's name. I want to access its constraints, but this time I want to access placement X. It's also 4.5 millimeters. And because I added that symmetry constraint, all of them are placed four and a half millimeters from that edge and they're all equal so our sketch is fully constrained and i get to create a hole again just want to flip this around so i can see the bottom so this time we want our diameter to be three millimeters we gotta remember to click reversed and I actually want to access magnet holes. And I want to access the depth, which is 2.1 millimeters. But this time, I want to double it. So I can either add my own 2.1 millimeter constraint, or I can multiply by 2, and that's 4.2 millimeters in depth. So here I have the depth of my magnet hole and the depth of my screw hole. And you see this little blue icon there. That just means this constraint is being calculated by an expression. And I can click OK. And now I've taken care of my magnet hole and my screw holes. And you won't see that from the top view, but I'm going to flip it around to see it from this view. There they are. Now, I'm going to rename this to be screw holes. And like I said, I forgot to rename this sketch. So, uh, why don't we call it magnet profile? Or add an S for clarity. Magnets profile. Make sure I spell correctly this time. And this time, I'm going to call it this sketch screws profile now remember how i said we were referencing the name instead of the absolute name or the label instead of the absolute name i'm going to go into this sketch flip it around again and i'm going to access this constraint here and i want to see its expression look it's renamed just as i renamed that other sketch so too is this expression here and if I go into the other expression, you can see that again. This is why I like to name, use, when I'm accessing a variable from another feature, I like to use the label name instead of the absolute name, which means if I were to use the absolute name in the expression editor, it would look like this. And that's the same thing. But it can get kind of confusing when you're trying to know exactly what you're referencing and 
this name here is different than what the features named in the model tree, which is why I like to use the name of the model tree feature. And it just makes your CAD much more readable and easier to edit when you have many, many features that you're trying to render all at once. So that's it. Now we've added our screw holes and we've seen how to use the whole tool in FreeCAD. Hope everybody likes and subscribes and follows along for our next feature next week. Next week we're going to be talking about how to add our first unit height. So tune in for more. We have a great week.